Hi, my name is Itat Hossein. You know me as the owner of Karachi Longboards. This is John Clark doing his uh, presentation on his book, Traditions of Hawaiian Surfing. Thank you all for coming. We're going to be begin the presentation right now. With that, you start the show. Let's go for it. For those of you that are on whole up by it, it is the Hawaiian language newspapers that are online. And a portion, a good portion of that archive is word searchable with your computers. So anyway, in 2005, when I retired from HFT, I happened to be working on a project, an EIS actually, Environmental Impact Statement for Waikiki, Waikiki Beach. I found Ho'olaupa'i and I went to look for some historical information in the Hawaiian language newspapers about Waikiki. When I got into that word search feature, I couldn't believe how much information was in the Hawaiian language newspapers that people hadn't seen before. And that's what got me started on this book. I found a lot of surfing information. I found names of surf spots. I found references to surfing on all of the islands. Just this whole wealth of information that had never seen the light of day. So I started to assemble it in 2005. I finished assembling it five years later in 2010. The UH Press uh, agreed to publish it, even though, <laughs> even though the manuscript I gave them was a, a thousand pages, single spaced. Um, they were pretty overwhelmed when they saw it. And that filtered down to the 500 page reference book that you've all seen out there on the, at the front when you came in. So anyway, that's Hawaiian surfing, traditions from the past. That's a little background on, on how I got started and where it came from. And what I'd like to do tonight is share with you something that I realized as I went through this five-year journey. I realized that Native Hawaiians did six distinct surf sports, six distinct surf sports. And that's what this presentation is. I'm gonna go through each one of the surf sports, show you some slides on each one. And I'm of the opinion that every surfing activity in the world today has spun off of these six surf sports. So as we're walking down this road, uh, we're gonna start with surfing, of course, but see if you can picture in your mind or think in your mind what those six surf sports were. Some of them are obvious, you know, surfing, board surfing, body surfing, but there's still four more beyond that. Okay? Okay, now, this is a 500-page reference book on traditional Hawaiian surfing, and I thought it would be important for you folks to know that I'm not only a researcher, but I'm a surfer. So, these first few slides are my surfing credentials, okay? This is December of 1954. I'm eight years old. This is me right in front of the Moana Hotel at a spot called Canoes. The man that taught me how to surf, his name was Clarence Maki, and Clarence was a surf photographer. His son David pushed me, I stood up, he took the picture, that's it. The first wave, I ever stood up on the first day I ever surfed. Pretty good, huh? <laughs> Pretty good to show up. How do you like those shorts? <laughs> Don't see too many of them around nowadays. Okay, this is me in my teens. This is the pipeline in 1963. Uh, local people were, local guys were surfing the pipeline back in the early 60s, and I was one of them as a teenager. Um, this particular shot happened to make it into the Surfer magazine. You can see uh, up at the top there, above the screen, uh, it made it into Surfer magazine in 1964. I threw this in because it's kind of an interesting photo. This is the first surf contest that was ever held on the North Shore. It was in 1964. And if you look at the names on the bottom, you can see that there's a lot of surfing legends in there. Butch Van Arstalen, Tiger Espera, Fred Hemmings, and Jeff Hackman, John Sutherland. Anyway, a lot of uh, very famous names that, that really went on to become world champions in the years after this early contest. The guy right in the middle is Dick Brewer. Dick had just arrived in the islands and he had just started 
um, just started making boards. I don't remember showing how they were. Surfboards away. Okay, now you remember that shot of me as eight years old, back there in canoes? This is 50 years later. I called up Clarence Mocking and I said, I said, Clarence, I'm, I've been surfing for 50 years. I'd like you to come down to Waikiki and take a picture of me. So he did. We went right out back to the same spot and here I am, 1954, still surfing. Okay, now I'm also a body surfer. Um, this is a spot called Magic Sands over in Kona on the Big Island. Some of you know it as white sands or disappearing sands. Anyway, um, this is the outside break that breaks um, beyond the rocks. You can see them there to your left. And uh, that's me coming across the wave at Magic Sands. And I'm also a pipe board rider. Pipe boards are wooden body boards. That's what everybody used to ride before Tom Murray invented the boogie board. And once the boogie boards came in in the 1970s, all of these old wooden boards disappeared. I still ride them though. I still ride body boards, wooden body boards. And in fact, I was riding that board this morning at Publix in Waikiki, which is where this shot is. Okay, now here's our first, uh, first of the six surf boards. Hey, no. Uh, anybody recognize the two surfers? Anybody? Eddie Aikau. Eddie Aikau is on the right. This is Waimea Bay. And uh, Fred Hemmings likes to call this the Freddie Eddie shot. <laughs> That's Fred Hemmings on the left and, and surfing legend uh, Eddie Aikau on the right. And Fred, of course, went on to be able, become a world champion. Now, as we go through this, um, for those of you that know a little bit about the Hawaiian language, those of you that know Olelo Hawaii, Watch the, watch the uh, names of the surf sports as we go through. The Hawaiians didn't only use the word hei, which means to slide, and hei no means surf sliding, that's how they say it, surfing. Anyway, they didn't only use the word hei to mean surfing, as we call it today. Okay. Now what I wanted to do is I wanted to talk a little bit about the early boards for hei no. And this is a shot at Bishop Museum. Everybody pretty much today thinks that Hawaiians only rode these giant 200 pound, 16 to 18 foot boards. And while it's true that they did ride boards that big and boards that heavy, they rode a lot of smaller boards too. In fact, if anything, the big heavy boards were exceptions and the more common boards were the smaller ones that you see to your right. The little ones, like the one you see to your right there, were called Papa Lee Lee, which means small boards. And today we don't use that term, we call them Pipo boards, P A I P O, Pipo boards. The next step up, the two boards in the middle, actually the three in the middle, those were called Malaya. And then I'm looking at the front row now, that, that real tall one, but that still looks like the Alaya, was called a Kiko'o. And then there was another even bigger board, this one, that was called an Olo. Now can you imagine surfing that? I mean, it looks like a telephone pole. <laughs> and it, and what they, the, the way they surfed these boards was like you would surf a canoe. Keep in mind that you have to surf a board like this just like you'd surf a canoe. And you would have to go way out to sea, catch the swell when it was still a swell, catch the wave when it was still a swell and then stay on the shoulder and stay away from the white water. You would just glide on the shoulder. And that's what these boards were. They were gliding boards. This is a shot of a, a native Hawaiian at Waikiki Beach. He's holding an alaya behind his back. And this, of course, is one of the classic shots. One of the, one of the things that I wanted to point out is that he's wearing a model. Now, the Hawaiians used Kapa, tapa, for their beachwear. Um, they, this was called a mano puakai, and the women would wear a papu, a sarong, which they called a papu puakai. Now, if you think about where kapa comes from, it comes from the bark of trees, right? And, I mean, it's almost paper-like when it's, when it's in its cloth form. Now, what did you think if you wore a paper-like fabric into the water that it would just dissolve? Well, that's what I thought too. 
But anyway, doing a little research, I found out that the Hawaiians water, they waterproof their copper. And they actually used uh, plant oils from plants and they would waterproof them so that they would stand up to water like the ocean. So that's your Maupuakai here and then the problems for the women. This is Duke Kahanamoku. This is uh, the same guy that took the photos of me. Clarence Maki took this photo of Duke. This was taken on his 64th birthday, which was in 1954. And Duke never did get into foam surfboards. The foam transition came in right about here, right about this time, but Duke stayed on his old wooden boards. So this is the last photo of the Duke uh, surfing that anyone ever took. And this is Richard Kawo, he's still around these days. You can find him down at Duke's, uh, usually watching him surf from the bar there. Um, but again, a, a native Hawaiian surfer surfing on a wooden board in Waikiki. I mean, in the background. Tom Blake, he's a guy from the mainland. He shows up here in the 1930s. And Tom invents the hollow board. Now this is actually a frame, there's a frame in there with plywood on the top and bottom. So everybody is moving, or right? Tom Lake is right in the thick of this, everybody's trying to go lighter. They're trying to get away from those old heavy boards. Tom comes up with the hollow board. Here's Duke with a hollow board. This particular style of board was used for racing, not so much for surfing. But that's a 16 foot hollow that was modeled after the old old boards. And that's red. That's a red hollow. Okay, when the hollow boards hit, everybody jumped on them. Can you see the ad down at the bottom there? You can get your own hollow board for $44.50 from the home furniture company. Anyway, uh, there were a lot of uh, the shipbuilders here, the guys who were making sampans down at Kiwalo Basin. They got into making boards and the furniture companies did too. So hollows were huge. They were huge for quite a while right up into the 1950s. Here's a classic shot. The photographer obviously got a whole bunch of people who could ride tandem, the men and women, the couples. And if you look carefully, they're all riding hollow boards right down the line. This is the end of the wooden surfboard. This photo was taken on Waikiki Beach, Clarence Maki again, um, 1954. What's missing out there on the point beyond the other side of the catamarans? Yeah, which one? Sheridan, the Sheridan Waikiki. So 1954, the foam boards are here and all of the wooden boards start to disappear, including the hollow boards. The beach still looks pretty narrow back in 54, doesn't it? Yeah, we've got a wider beach there now. Okay, now we're gonna move on. So that was our first surf sport. Now we're gonna move on to the second one, which is Pakaka Nalu, outrigger canoe surfing. Pakaka usually means um, to skim, like you would uh, skim across the water, or if you took a stone, if you were gonna skip a stone, if you skip the stone across the water, that's the idea between, behind pakaka. So again, the Hawaiians are not saying hei nalo for canoe surfing, they're saying pakaka nalo for outrigger canoe surfing. This is a shot at Waikiki, um, right at canoes. Now this is a shot, that's Fred Hemming steering the boat, uh, Jimmy Austin in the middle, Johnny Mounts in the front, and a guy named Locke Eggers on the surfboard. Um, they're using one of the Outrigger's canoes. The Outrigger has a whole bunch of surfing canoes, 22 footers, and this is one. They're out at a spot called Castles. Castles is a big blue water break that's straight out from the natatorium, and it only breaks when it's super big. So it's like a second reef spot and um, it, it gets pretty good size out there. Fred likes to canoe surf and whenever Castles is breaking, they go out there and ride it. Now this shot, this shot was taken on the North Shore at a spot called Avalanche. And this is another big wave surfing spot. The guy in the back that's steering, his name's Brian Kiaulana. 
And Brian's dad is Buffalo, who is one of the surfing legends from the west side. But anyway, you all remember Baywatch, right? The TV series Baywatch? Okay, when Baywatch was being shot on the North Shore at Haleiwa, Brian, the guy in the back, was in charge of water safety for all of the in-water scenes. So one day between shooting, they had a, a four-man, four-person canoe there. So Brian tells these three guys from Baywatch, let's go for a canoe ride. <laughs> he takes them out to Avalanche, <laughs> and they catch this wave. Anyway, at least Brian taught them well. He taught them when you're on a really steep wave in an outrigger canoe, you have to lean out on the outrigger portion, lean out on the yakus to hold that outrigger down so the canoe doesn't flip. So that's the crew from Baywatch, holding on for dear life. Kahanalu, this is our third surf sport that Native Hawaiians did. Kaha is short for kikaha, and kikaha is another one of the common verbs that Hawaiians use to talk about surfing. Kikaha means to glide. Manu kikaha, for example, means a gliding bird. So when Hawaiians looked at body surfing, and this is a shot of Al Balderam at Pipeline, when the Hawaiians looked at body surfing, to them, you were gliding. You were gliding across the face of the wave, using only your body to surf. Kahanalu. Now this footage, these are all screenshots that came out of a 1930s movie. This is a whole bunch of kids that are body surfing right in Waikiki, right about in front of the uh, Prince Kuhio statue, which is just on the diamond head side of the Duke statue. Um, just watch what they're doing now. They're swimming, and this is where the crawl stroke comes from. Native Hawaiians like to do we're doing a crawl stroke before people even called it that. So I'm just gonna flip through these and you can see these are just a bunch of kids surfing 1930s in Waikiki. Now you see that foot up on the guy on the left? That's the style, is when you body surfed in, you put one foot up. And you can see the guy on the right, what's he got on his foot? A fin. Commercial fins, fins for sale, didn't come out till the 1930s, and that's one way we, we documented that footage. And there's that foot again, styling as you come up on the beach. This guy is a beach boy, his name's Purple. This was taken in the 1950s. He's a beach boy from, uh, originally from Niihau. And this is the classic Hawaiian body style for uh, or Hawaiian style for body surfing. You keep your arms tight to your side, you're very streamlined, and you just power through the wave. Today though, nobody surfs like this, or very few people do. Most people body surf like this, with one, one arm out in front and one arm behind. This is a shot of a, a body surfer using a little handboard. He's got a handboard on his right hand, and he's in a contest at Point Panic, down by Kiwala Basin. Now this is probably the most famous body surfer in the world. Everybody recognize him? That's our president. That's Barack Obama body surfing at Sandy Beach. And you can see he's, he's got it. I mean, he's got his arm out, he's got his arm back, and he's just blazing through the shore break at Sandy's. Not bad, huh? So we've got the first president in the world who's a surfer. Pretty good. This is a style that's common today too, to have both arms in front. This is another Sandy Beach shot. You can see that there's about six inches of water under her. So she's got both arms out for protection. And this shot doesn't come out too good, but I put it in there because there's a shark in this shot. Now, you really can't see the shark, but he's right under the lip of the wave. There's a dark shadow there and the shark is actually body surfing the wave with that body boarded. Sharks like to have fun too. Okay, now, now we get to body boarding and we get to pai po'o. Pai is another word that's used to surf and usually it means to come ashore. 
Po'o is your head, so Pai Po'o means that you're body surfing head first. And if you're going to use a little board along with it, that's a Papa Pai Po'o. The name got changed as the years went by to Pai Po, which is the name we use today. <coughs> this shot here is a, shows some uh, Native Hawaiians body surfing on the Big Island. This is a spot called Kawa, which is over in Ka'u on the Big Island. And you can see he's riding a little Paipo'o board uh, at Kawa. Now, you really can't see it, but the guy in the front to your right that's watching these two guys come in on their Paipo'o boards, Papa Paipo'o, he's also wearing a malo. This is 1910. These are surfers on the neighbor islands, still using the old traditions and the old swimwear, 1910, malo puakai. And that's South Point off in the distance. Uh, Kawa, Kawa is just on the um, east side of South Point. Here's the guy that gives us our modern term, Paipo, as we call it today, Wally Forsyth. Wally's one of our surfing legends. And in the 1950s, he starts making Paipo boards. On every board that he makes, he puts on a decal. And that's how he spells Paipo. And Wally's still around today, and he still pronounces it Pai Po, but other people that saw this, um, they didn't know that there was a, a, a macron over that O, and they just said Pai Po, and that's where the evolution of the word came from. Here's Wally, 1950s, standing up on a four-foot Pai Po board. So I guess this is the short board revolution before it happened in the 70s, right there. And these are just some old style pipos that we took, some, uh, took a picture of out at the old sugar mill in Wailua. Okay, this is Sean Ross, who was a lifeguard in the 1970s, riding a wooden pipo board at the pipeline. So he's dropping into a pretty good sized wave here just with his little wooden bodyboard. And this one kind of faded out too, but that's Sean right at the bottom of a huge pipeline wave. Uh, again, writing on a small wooden board. Now, these are, these are some modified pipo boards that I ride myself. These two boards are actually made out of native woods. Uh, the lighter colored wood is Willy Willy, which is like a native balsa. It's very light, very porous, and the stringers are koa. And I ride these boards. They have a small alaya shape, but I ride them prone. I ride them lying down. And that's a shot of me riding one of the boards at Publix in Waikiki. Okay, now we're up to our fifth, our fifth sport. This is Heione sand sliding. And do we call it sand sliding anymore? No, we don't. They call it skimming now. So anyway, we have skim boards like the one he's riding on. And Heione again to surf on the sand, sand sliding, sand skimming. Now, Native Hawaiians sand slid, or went sand sliding, but they didn't use, they used skim boards, but not like we do today. These are screen clips, again, from a 1930s film, and I want you to watch the guy on the right. He's gonna sand slide, this is Waikiki, he's gonna sand slide on his stomach, and this is the original version of sand sliding, of skimming. You ran as fast as you could, and then you just threw your arms out in front of you, and you did a surface dive and skimmed on your chest. And you would just skim across the face of the beach. And this was really popular here on Oahu, especially on the Waianae Coast where the beaches are steep, and you know, on a big, on a big winter swell, the waves wash right up and then they wash right down. You just dive in there and skim on your chest all the way back into the water. So watch him now. He doesn't last too long in this footage, but there he goes. He's diving on his chest, and now he's skimming. Nothing under him, just his chest, skimming on the water. And then he goes out of the frame. The other two guys, the photographer managed to catch three people skimming. The guy who skimmed on his chest with nothing. The guy on the left who's skimming on a small skim board, a pipe board. And the guy in the middle, what's he writing? A mattress cover, exactly right. 
Now, you got to give the Hawaiians credit. When the big hotels came to Waikiki, starting with the Moana Hotel in 1901, the Hale Kulani in 1914, and I'm sorry, uh, in 1917, and the Royal in 1927, besides bringing big buildings and tourists to Waikiki, they also brought mattress covers and pillowcases. And the Hawaiians discovered these really quickly and turned them into skim boards. So that guy in the middle is coming at you on a mattress cover or a pillowcase, you decide. This is 1930s now. What's he on? Anyway, pillowcase surfing, um, bag riding, it went by a lot of different names. This was really popular in the islands from the 1930s right up until about the 1950s. Um, it all started to disappear again with the foam boards and then finally when the, when the boogie boards came in, it pretty much disappeared. So this is what skimming looks like uh, you know, nowadays. The kids at Sandy Beach skim like this. They just skim right off the beach. They ride up the face of the wave, make a U-turn and come right back down. Some of them do backflips. This guy has just uh, launched right off the face of a wave at Sandy Beach, then a backflip, and the photographer caught him upside down. And there's another shot of him doing the same thing. You never saw a photo like that before, did you? Anyway, this is, this is part of the more modern uh, gymnastics that are done in skimboard, with skimboards today. And there's a shot of them at Sandy Beach. Now girls get into it too. Um, skimboarding is really big with a lot of girls and they actually have um, a contest circuit that, that's here and on the mainland as well. She's one of the better riders here in the Hawaiian Islands. And these are all Sandy Beach shots. And just about everybody skimboards nowadays this is a California skimboard dog. And if any of you surf the internet, just put in skimming dog, you know, on Google or whatever your search engine is. And you can watch videos of this dog skimming. And he not only skimboards, but he also um, skateboards and he snowboards. So make sure you check him out. Okay, now going back to our bag riders. Bag riding started in Waikiki in the 30s. It moved out to the Waianae area. This is a, st a shot of a guy from, uh, who was in the Navy, taken in the late 1940s. So he's grabbed a, a mattress cover and he's uh, bag riding out there on the west side. This is another series of uh, screenshots that came out of an old surfing movie from the 1970s. This guy here, Al Santos, is just the grandmaster of bag riders. So anyway, all of the shots that are gonna come up after this, and I'm gonna go through them real quick, they're all taken of Al riding his pillowcase, riding his bag on one wave. And this is a wave in Makaha. He does 360s, in other words, spins. He does reverse 360s, and he rides the bag sideways. And all, all balancing, just balancing, on this inflated pillowcase. Okay, so all of this stuff coming up is Al Santos riding at Makaha. So right now he's just trapped air in his pillowcase in his bag. He's sealing it off. Now he's going to skim. He's going to skim on his bag. And he just skims right across the, uh, the shore break there at Makaha. And th this, is <laughs> this is what they called it, how to ride a, p a pink pillowcase, 1970s surf movie. So anyway, Al skims out, and that's how he paddles out with the surfers. He's just kicking with his fins to get out to the lineup. Okay, Al gets out there, turns around, catches the wave. And again, remember now, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go through all these screenshots. This is all one wave, and he's balancing, maneuvering all the way into the, back into the beach. Pretty amazing, isn't it? 
and he never falls off. <laughs> so he's, he's spinning, riding sideways, riding backwards, all the way into the sand right up on the beach. Pretty amazing guy. Al's still around right now. He lives up in Volcano on the Big Island. Al Santos. Okay, here's our last. This is the sixth of the traditional Hawaiian surf sports. Hee pu'e wai. Pu'e, you already know the hee, it means to slide. Pu'e means, in this case, it means agitated. Now, if you look at the third word, wai, wai is freshwater, not kai. We're talking, uh, we're talking surfing in agitated freshwater. In other words, we're talking about surfing like in a flash flood. And that's what this shot is. This shot is river surfing, actually riding a stationary wave right at the mouth of Waimea River here on the island of Oahu. So this is what it looks like. You've got Waimea Bay in the background. You can see the beach right in the front. And if you look carefully, there's actually three guys that are riding the standing waves, the stationary waves, that are forming as the river runs into the bay. So here's where it all starts. It starts when the river uh, starts to build up in the back of the beach, and the boys come down, it's, they see it's ready to go. They bust out their shovels and start to dig a little trench. Once, once the, the river starts to flow in the trench, of course it starts to cut a channel right through that beach. So right, so now, the river is starting to run, and the boys are just standing on the side waiting for the, the channel to get a little wider and for the stationary waves to form. Okay, you can see that the channel's widened. There's just a small little wave there, and this guy's jumped in. He's giving it a shot. So what the guys do is that they just stand on the sandbank, they stand on either side with their surfboard or their bodyboard, and when the stationary wave forms, they just dive into it. The rides last maybe for about a minute at the most, and the stationary waves, of course, last only as long as the river is still flowing to create them. Once the, once the channel is cut really wide, um, then everything just everything just dies out and the stationary waves stop forming. That usually takes about an hour. So to river surf, you have about a one hour window of opportunity and you just gotta be on it. So here's everybody standing, waiting, in, waiting their turn. And this is all Waimea Bay. This is all uh, Waimea right here on the island of Oahu. And you see the guy on the left, the, the guy who's riding the wave, we can't see him too well, but you can see the guy on the left with a camera, he's taking a picture of his friend on that wave. And here's a guy doing a cutback on his bodyboard, uh, right in front of the sandbank, right at the edge of the river. And here's a guy uh, who's actually on a shortboard, he's actually on a surfboard, and you can see where the bay is now. The bay is way in the distance, so the standing, the standing waves, the stationary waves are forming way back towards the river mouth. And if you look carefully over the right bank, you can see that there's actually surf out there at Waimea Point, which is usually where the surfers are, or not back here in the river. And here's a guy almost all the way back into the uh, into the, um, the watershed area, back into the, the area where the, wet, the water collects. And you can see that the, the shovels are still back there stuck in the sand. So this is Hei Pui Wai. This is river surfing, and this is something that Native Hawaiians did. Okay, now this is the last slide in my presentation. Um, we've gone through all of the six traditional Hawaiian surf sports. Thank you very much for coming. Well, thank you. Um, I just gave a presentation on Hawaiian surfing traditions from the past, and I hope you all enjoy it. <laughs>